So many people just hack away at big game hindquarters. They don't even follow the seams and get the muscle groups off and it drives me crazy. The other thing that drives me nuts is when people don't know what each individual cut on a hindquarter is. The hindquarter on an elk, deer, oryx, any big game animal is a huge proportion of the usable meat and you really should know the different traits amongst the different muscle groups. Just because of the biology of the animal and how the animals evolve, they use those different muscle groups in different ways, and that results in huge differences in the actual traits, the traits that matter when it comes to cooking and utilizing those specific cuts. We're talking the tenderness, the grain of the meat, the actual shape of the cut, all that matters. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I take apart a hind quarter, and then I'm gonna walk you quickly through all the different cuts. It's gonna be super useful to you as a hunter. Now, if you have a differing opinion about specific cuts and what I say about them, leave it in the comments. I learned so much from you guys when you leave stuff in the comments, tons of tips and tricks, and I'm sure some of you use these cuts in differing ways than how I do, so I wanna hear about it. If you do like this video and you find it useful, do me a huge favor and like it and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go. Alright, so I just showed you how I broke down a hind quarter and I'll just go over the cuts real quick. So this is the hind quarter all splayed out. This is the bottom piece, basically the shank or the hawk. We took that out with the femur. So I've got it all spread out here. I can put it back together for you, see how it looks. So this is how it actually lays, so the ball joints here. So this is your top round. Most people consider that the best cut of it, like overall the best cut of the round. And then here you have your eye around. Most people view that as kind of the, the least useful cut of the round. And then here you have the bottom round. In the bottom round, people like it because it's a nice shape. This is what, in beef, this is typically what roast beef comes out of. This bottom uh, round is actually a great uh, cut for jerky or something just because it's got a really tight texture and it's a big, you know, rectangular shaped piece that's easy to cut big uh, slices out of. So it can be used that way or you can cut roast out of it. It's a little tough for steaks because there's so much, uh, so much texture to it. This, you know, when you're talking about venison, most people call this the knuckle. Beef guys call this the sirloin tip. It makes awesome roast. It's shaped like a football, basically. Um, so it makes like, if it's a white tail or something, it's a perfect little roast just because of the size of it. For an elk or an oryx in this uh, case, you can cut it into a couple roasts. You can actually make kind of interesting steaks out of it. It's actually a group of three muscles. So when you stake it, it's gonna have, um, it's gonna have some little like ligament, uh, kind of tissue in between the pieces of meat, but it can be a roast or steaks. So it's just gonna be a little chewier. And then this little piece right here, I don't have it quite cut out. This piece here, that's actually the tri-tip. So in beef, they call this the tri-tip and that makes a good little roast. You can barbecue it. It's not gonna have the fat that a beef tri-tip would have because on the tri-tip, typically the fat actually lays on one side of it and people barbecue it or smoke it or whatever with that fat on it. On game meat, people are typically gonna trim that fat off, so it's gonna be a lean cut, but it's good for whatever, good roast, steaks, anything like that. This is the rump right here, this piece. And this piece, to me, is way underrated in terms of venison or game meat. People don't typically use it. A lot of times it actually ends up ground because it's so messy. And when you're taking hindquarters off an animal, one of the problems is you're working your knife through here as you get to the ball joint. So it gets a lot of this. Like I try to do my best here, but a lot of the times you end up with this where you kind of have a dirty cut, a rough cut on the top. So it ends up just being kind of looking like a chunk of just whatever, kind of a mess. So uh, people throw it in the grind uh, uh, pile, but if you, if you cut it into roast or you stake it, it's actually a super good uh, piece of meat. If you think about it, it's, it's really just right over the hip bone from the uh, back strap. So one of the advantages of knowing how to take apart a hind quarter like I just showed you is something I didn't mention in the intro, is that you can actually just break down a quarter quickly and bone it out into those nice muscle groups, and you can package that way. You can actually freeze it that way, but 
the really applicable thing you can do in this situation, if you're short for time and you just need to get those quarters boned out and, and, and packaged, you know, say if you're gonna get on an airplane or you need to ship the meat, it's really helpful if you do what I just did. Just break down the quarter via the muscle group. A matter of fact, I've got a video on the channel and it shows you how I travel with a whole big game animal on an airplane. If you know how to do that in certain situations, it's gonna save you a ton of money and a ton of hassle. So go check that video out. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see ya.